It's time now for us to start thinking about the discrete uh, Fourier transform because there are some differences between the discrete and the continuous case that are pretty important. And in particular, uh, the fact that the discrete case, we don't have to worry about convergence so much uh, as I'll show in a moment. So we want to get to this and start thinking about discrete signals. But first, let's remember uh, the continuous case. The continuous case says I can represent a signal as a set of Fourier modes, e the i k omega naught t, with coefficients a of k that I can determine through inner product. And here it is. This is the values of those a of k's. And so we can compute this here to get the full representation of the signal with the a of k. It's an infinite series. And so, of course, we want to make sure that we can guarantee that this is actually going to converge and not blow up to infinity. And the last lecture, we talked about the conditions of the signal uh, that would allow us to guarantee this convergence. But now we want to switch our mind to the discrete case. And in the discrete Fourier series, we're really again thinking about a periodic signal, so x of n being mapped uh, over to itself of x of n plus n. So n is this period that's there. So if I march it forward n steps, I get back to exactly where I was. So if we have this, we have this periodic signal we want to work with. In this case, we do have a fundamental frequency, omega naught, which is 2 pi over n. So whatever the number of steps are to get me back to where I started, that's going to determine the fundamental frequency. Okay, so that's the basic setup for the discrete uh, Fourier series that we want, because now what we're going to do is exactly like what we did in... The continuous case, we're going to represent some functions. Uh, we're going to have as our basis, our coordinate system, essentially, is 5kn, which is e to the i k omega naught n. So this is going to be our basis set, which is our Fourier modes, right? These are cosines and sines, where k is 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. All these signals uh, have period n. In other words, they all are uh, have the same period as the fundamental period. So again, if you have cosine t, cosine 2t has a, cosine t has a period 2 pi, cosine 2t is also periodic 2 pi, cosine 3t is also periodic 2 pi, and so forth. So that's what this is saying here. They're all going to have the same underlying period n, okay? Uh, and I can just keep going up in coefficients. However, there is a big difference now. In the discrete case, this discrete representation, uh, if signals differ, and we did this all the way back in many lectures ago when we were doing some, some of the introduction to discrete uh, signals, for the discrete signals are identical if their frequency differs by 2 pi. So this is a really important statement. So in other words, unlike the continuous case, when I just keep going up in k and I get higher and higher frequencies, in the discrete case, once I get 2 pi from where I started, it's the same signal. Another way to say that is this. In the discrete Fourier case, if I start with psi 0 and I go up and end uh, points, I actually go back to exactly where I started. These are different by 2 pi. So in other words, this function is exactly this function, which is very different than the continuous case. The continuous case, you just get higher and higher and higher frequencies, whereas this says I actually return back to the frequency I started with. They're identical or phi 1 goes to 5n plus 1. So finite number of discrete frequencies. What's great about this, at least from the context of thinking about a Fourier representation, a sum, you're adding up a finite number of coefficient, uh, finite number of elements. So you're not going to have to worry about this convergence issue, which we did with the continuous case, which you're integrating uh, or summing up over an infinite number of terms. Here it is a finite number of terms, and so you don't have to really think uh, nearly as hard about convergence issues because it's a finite sum. Okay, so here is then the discrete Fourier series representation. My signal now is a finite sum. In fact, n terms, right? So uh, a of k, phi of k, n. So remember, n is the basic period of that signal, okay? And so I only need n terms to represent this sum. I can pick any n terms. So for instance, I could pick n terms between 0 and 2 pi, negative pi and pi. 
you get to pick what two pi interval you work with, but that's what this is basic, this notation is representing. Take all the signals in that two pi bin, sum up over those, and you have a complete representation of your signal. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> and so remember that this 5k, they're exponential, so let me just make that explicit here, and this is the discrete time Fourier series, okay? So I take this Fourier representation, finite number of n. Okay, how to determine those coefficients? That's, that's the big issue here, because you know? I get to pick these. They're, I don't have to determine them. They're just, I go over some series here, uh, but the A of K, I don't know. So give me a signal X of n, how do I get the A of K? One way to do that is just to plug in some values. In other words, you can say, well, X at zero is, Put in n equals zero right here. n equals zero, e to the zero is one, so you get a of zero. And then put in n, n equals one, and then you have this sum. Put in n equals two all the way to n minus one. And so what you would get here is n equations and n unknowns. So you could solve these n by n system of equations for all those coefficients, a zero, a one, all the way to a of n minus one. That's one way to do it. However, uh, there's a quicker way and a more elegant way, and it's the same way we did in the continuous case. In the continuous case, what we said is, well, I know that these building blocks that I'm using here are, in fact, orthogonal to each other. So I can always just take the inner product of both sides of this and sum, and I'll use that inner product property. So let's do it. So here's what we're going to do. Take this signal, x of n, represent it like this. And the way we take an inner product, so remember, this is the basic function we are using. It's our basic representation. It's our basic building block or a coordinate system. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the negative i p omega naught t, where p is some other integer. So p is some integer. k is a different integer. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by this and then sum. So on the left, so if I multiply by this on this left side and the right side, and then I put a sum in front of it, the left side just becomes this here. It's this e to the negative i p omega naught n, sum it up over the n components. And on the right, when I do this sum, I get this term here. And this term here is magical or special, or they're orthogonal to each other. These, if k is not equal to p, these, the sum becomes zero. And if k is equal to p, then I get a finite representation of this system. In fact, what I get is n. So orthogonality just applied to this and the fact that these Fourier, co Fourier modes are orthogonal to each other allows me to very easily calculate that the, the p coefficient, a of p, is 1 over n, this inner product here of the signal against e to the negative i p omega naught n. So it looks very similar to what we did in the continuous case, just using orthogonality to compute how much of the signal goes into each of these different directions. So now we have this box here of a very important formula. It tells us that a signal x of n in the discrete case can be represented as the n frequencies that represent this signal, so over a two pi bin, which is a of k e to the i k omega naught n, or if I write that omega naught in terms of the fundamental period, which is related to n, in other words, n is the number of jumps you take to get back to where you started, you get 2 pi over n. This is another representation of that. Uh, at where the coefficients a of k for each of those Fourier modes is given by, oops, 1 over n, x of n, e to the minus j k omega naught n, or again, right, rewriting omega naught, you get 2 pi over n here. So this is a really important formula because this is actually our expression for the discrete uh, time series, uh, discrete Fourier transform. Uh, that we have for these time series. And so I can take any of this, and remember the sum is only a finite number of n, so we don't have to really worry about convergence here. We just add up a finite number of objects and look at the, what the values are. So only ter n terms are needed. And by the way, I can pick any n terms I want. So I could start off and represent my signal x of n. I could start from a0 phi0 all the way to a of n minus 1 phi of n minus 1. Or I could start at x of n, being a1 phi1 all the way a of n phi of n. In other words, I get to pick any n terms in sequence that I desire. So you get to pick this out in building your representation. Oftentimes people just do this one here, but you're not constrained to it. 
All you need to know is you have to get, you get n terms and I can pick those n terms anywhere I want in that series, okay? And this is the important observation, a of k is equal to a of k plus n. It's just periodic, so the signal is just the same. So that's a really nice property, these finite representation of discrete signals is that you only need n terms altogether. So as an example, let's consider the sign, sine omega naught n where omega naught is two pi over this big N here, okay? So, uh, so we, we have a signal, and this is very simple, right? It's a, har it's a simple harmonic here. Uh, then uh, here's, here's, its, here's its relationship between frequency and period. Uh, and so in fact, we can actually write X of N directly as an exponential, right? So sine is e to the i minus e to minus i over two i. So this is just this representation. And right away, you see I've taken this initial signal and I'm gonna represent it in terms of these complex exponentials and I can just decompose the signal and it's right there. This is it. So I have the two components that are important to us. And so one way to represent that is I have then a signal, or let's go back here. Here's the signal. I have e to the i omega naught n and the coefficient of this is one here over two i. There's a coefficient in front of e to minus i omega naught n, which is negative one or two i. So that's what I'm representing here. The coefficient a of minus one and a of one is here. So in fact, if you take a look at the signal from a discrete point of view, this is what it looks like here. And so you can start to see this structure as a function of k here uh, of this signal, this signal here. So you can plot this and this is what you get. Uh, and so you can see here you have this, here's the a1, here's a minus one, and notice that this thing repeats. It repeats. So every five, so this thing here shows up one, two, three, four, five times later, same signal. One, two, three, four, five. So n is equal to five in this case. So really what I just need to do is sum up one, two, three, four, five, I just have to sum up these five terms <coughs> uh, in my representation of the discrete uh, transform and I have everything I need because it just repeats beyond that. So this is a very simple example of how to start thinking about the discrete representation. It is very much like the continuous. I'm going to project onto these Fourier modes, but now I only have a finite number of k's that I have to add up. So I just have to determine how many there are. It depends upon the function I'm working with. Once I have that, then I can just take the fundamental period bin, the n of that are in there, add those together, and that gives me my Fourier representation of the signal. So that concludes this lecture on using this, uh, con instead of the continuous version of the, cosine, uh, of the Fourier transform, we were using the discrete version of the Fourier transform which has, again, the big difference there is a finite representation versus an infinite series that comes from the continuous.